The economy is made up of real people doing real stuff, and it affects everything. Which you obviously know since you're a real person doing real stuff. Marketplace is here to help you get smart about everything beyond the what of the day's business and economic news. We dig into the how and the why with the real people driving our economy. From big tech and interest rates to small businesses and what's happening at the Fed, Marketplace breaks it all down so you don't have to. Listen to Marketplace wherever you get your podcasts. Mahomes has the time, delivers, perfectly downfield, touchdown, Patrick Mahomes with a rope. This one, and it's touchdown. This time going deep for Beckham Jr. Did he catch it? He did. Hello and welcome back to Road of His Overtime on Road of His Radio. My name is Colin Kelly. You can follow me on Twitter at Overtime Ireland. My co-host on the show, as always, is Sean Siegel, who you can follow on Twitter at FF underscore Contrarian. I actually uh, a note on that. Um, you were on with uh, Pat Fitzmaurice, uh, another show that I helped produce on the Fitz on Fantasy podcast. Um, and he mentioned about that you had your uh, zero RB piece pinned at the top of your uh, Twitter feed. I thought that was an interesting way uh, to to mention your Twitter handle. But uh, I think uh, it's probably pinned since I think maybe 2017. Is it, Sean? At least that early. I, I not really sure when the last time that that was checked and updated. And like I mentioned on Pat's show, Pat uh, does a great job. Make sure you check that out if you can. I really enjoy recording with him every year. But yeah, with the pods that we're doing now, that's that's the place to find me. So, you know, <laughs> come here, listen to OT, listen to Stealing Bananas, send us listener questions. We have a great time interacting with the listeners on the various shows. And yeah, this this is the place for... <laughs> So I think uh, in the old days we used to, um, you know, say send a stamped addressed envelope to whichever address. But if you're trying to get in touch with Sean Siegel, just uh, email roadofisradio at gmail.com and then I'll find appropriate channels to, to pass it along <laughs> to Sean. Um, but uh, I was trying to figure out today if it was like something that coincided with the start of this podcast that Sean just decided uh, I can't stay on Twitter anymore to hear whatever feedback's going to be <laughs> to me for this one. So he left and never went back. But uh, on today's show, all joking aside, we are going to be talking uh, about a number of interesting topics. And uh, one of those is going to be Clyde Edwards Allaire, who um, is getting some buzz as of uh, recent times. Um, obviously, had a little bit of a, uh, we could say, a disappointment based on what we probably thought this time last year with the opportunity with the Chiefs. But uh, are we seeing people under? estimate what can be done this season we're also going to do uh, another piece by sam wallace we had sam on a couple of weeks ago love reading his work and he is decoding some backfields around the nfl and this is a backfield that we've been interested in all off season it is the arizona cardinals uh, we have obviously chase edmonds james connor we're gonna be diving into that uh, we'll, we'll just dive straight into that one actually and, and get into it so sean these are our two running backs that have been on very interesting uh, draft kind of paths over the last let's say four to five months back in February, pretty much around the same spot. And then obviously Chase Edmonds um, has been kind of projected to be the running back one uh, with the Cardinals. And uh, that's pushed him up to kind of 60th around in, in terms of overall ADP, whereas James Conner has kind of stayed pretty much around the same spot that he was. He had a dip and then he has risen back up a little bit. But for me this year, Conner fits in as basically for me a prime zero rb candidate because i would not be surprised at all if we get a couple of weeks into the season he's getting the goal line carries and a high powered offense you mentioned about how we can see um you know aj Dillon get those goal line carries for the packers and have more offensive power with Aaron Rodgers there i think james connor fits in very similar for the atlanta or sorry for the arizona cardinals and that's going to lead to points scoring for him and if we're looking at the kind of 10th round where he was going he is starting to creep up a little bit so that might make it start to make it a little bit more expensive but what's your thoughts overall on chase Edmonds' current adp of running back 27 and then we have uh james connor at uh, running back 36 so not a huge gap between them but i think um i, I think there's a, a big opportunity here for james connor right one of the things that we're looking at with Edmonds, and the thing that keeps jumping up for me is that after he had the big carry game in Drake's absence last season when Drake had to miss, they completely marginalized him again as a running back, right? So he's getting the pass catching numbers we can see here from the NFL Stat Explorer 
and Sam's great work that he finished sixth in targets, sixth in receiving yards. We know like we like that element of the profile, but we also like it in a range where we're not having to overpay for it. You go and you look at his season last year. He had a couple of big games, week five, week seven, scored 20 plus points. But then from week nine to week 17, he didn't have a single RB1 finish and only three RB2 finishes, right? And this is during a time period where the offense was struggling. Drake is playing poorly. They're doing a lot of run into the line and fall down kinds of plays. Kyler Murray isn't as dynamic because he's injured. And for me, it sends a very negative sign that they didn't trust Edmonds more when the offense really needed his electricity if you think he has that as part of his package, right? Now, recently he's moved from about pick 70 to pick 60, and we say, well, that's only 10 slots, but it's 10 slots in a range where it's a really pretty big deal in terms of now who he's starting to move up ahead of. And he got that move because the people following the team say that this battle between Edmonds and James Conner may be a battle in name only, right? That it's going to be Edmonds, Conner is the backup, and maybe a clear backup. But one of the reasons why we really like Connor is that unlike Drake, who somewhat bizarrely the Raiders are trying to push as sort of a pass catching back and even as a wide receiver, Connor is a guy who has both parts of this profile and could cut into Edmonds in a way that Drake at least didn't last season. Now you can say, well, you know, that was by design. That was by choice. The Cardinals could have used Drake as a receiver. They decided not to, but we look at Connor here, and it's easy to forget how dynamic he really was last season, even within the context of how bad the Steelers were. I mean, in the first seven games of the season, he scored almost 16 points per game, which are very good running back numbers, right? And so you look at this, you look at how the Cardinals have been very willing to go to the guy who was hot. You know, you take someone like David Johnson, who had some of those injury issues, he comes back, he plays poorly. And despite the big contract and what he had done for the team in the past, they very quickly moved to Drake, who had the hot hand at that point. So I think the Cardinals are going to be very willing to play the better player. And I don't necessarily know who that is. Connor has the big injury red flags. Edmonds has the talent draft slot, you know, 2020 usage red flags. And so when you put those two together, it really does matter a ton where they're going, right? And when we're looking at running backs all throughout the draft, we're trying to get guys who are a good value at the price. And that's really the crux of Sam's entire article here where he looks at it and he says, you know, Edmonds is going in a range where you can get T. Higgins, Deontay Johnson, Brandon Ayuk. Connor is going in a range where, yeah, there are some wide receivers you might still draft there. You know, Will Fuller is there. Michael Gallup is there. But that's a huge difference in terms of what you're giving up at wide receiver. I've gotten some emails, some questions about the Zero RB must draft candidates show that Ben and I did for Ceiling Fantasy. Wanting us to talk about some of these guys like Edmonds and this is really the reason that those guys are not in the mix, right? The value that you have to get up to get somebody who still has a lot of potential red flags and a lot of movement. One of the things that I've mentioned in several of my articles recently and in terms of discussing this with people is that you take someone like Devin Singletary, who over the last two seasons has scored 45 more points than Chase Edmonds, and you look at the fact that you can get him six or seven rounds later, that's a big difference when you're talking about two guys who were in a committee Two guys who have sort of hybrid value, two guys who are in explosive offenses. And, you know, Singletary actually has a little bit better background, right? And I think uh, the reason that we have that gap in ADP is, is very simple and straightforward, and it follows the logic, right? We think that Edmonds is going to be the starter. We think that Singletary is going to be at best in a committee and likely the backup. But one of the things about both of these committees is that there is more uncertainty than is really priced in. Zero RB works and a wide receiver heavy followed by running backs late approach works in part because these exploitable opportunities exist in all drafts in all seasons. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be right every time. That, that, that would 
be exactly the opposite of what we're saying. One of the things we're saying is that it's difficult to be right and you want to take the price that gives you the best chance to have upside and not cost you other things on your team. That's one of the reasons why I really like Connor here. And I like some players on other teams as well that have a similar profile to Edmonds, but you don't have to pay as much for it. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. And uh, Sam points out that the Cardinals over the last uh, couple of years have had a, a big jump up um, and their rush attempts going from 19th uh, in the league to 6th. Um, so obviously when we look at last year, Kenyon Drake had 239 attempts not very productive with it uh, still short of a thousand yards but he had 10 rushing touchdowns and just 194 ppr points but if we look at it, that's you know over uh, almost 145 of a difference between him and chase edmonds who chase edmonds then had um 26 less ppr points over the season with just one rushing touchdown so uh, drake wasn't very efficient edmonds had some nice plays and kind of some flash plays, but it didn't have uh, the consistency throughout the season. And like you mentioned, um, I don't think it's a really clear cut situation that he just dominates this backfield and gets all those touches. And I, I do like Connor. I liked him in the past. I actually did think that he was too um, high of a price in his late time in Pittsburgh, but I think we're going to see here that there is a, a value. And I, I think that he could close that gap pretty quick. But I also think those numbers from last year show that like, you know, if Chase Edmonds adds 100 carries, there's still going to be work there as well for um, for, for um, James Conner. So I, I'm I'm on board with James Conner. He's in that range where you mentioned AJ Dillon um, in the last show. I mentioned him there a moment ago. Those kind of guys are going in that range. The two of those guys, Tony Pollard, um, they're the kind of guys that I'm targeting. And it makes perfect sense when it's, it's very simple when you say like T. Higgins, Deontay Johnson, or Branton Ayuk versus uh, Chase Edmonds or james connor versus will fuller versus michael gallup uh, so I, I think i think my decision is is made there but good work again by sam really enjoying um, that series where he's decoding the backfields and um, we'll have another piece coming up after the break hey rotoviz radio listener this is curtis patrick from the dynasty command center podcast and i've got a special deal for you today go to rotoviz.com Click the subscribe button, put the 12 month subscription in your cart and use promo code RV radio 2021. That's RV radio 2021. And you're going to save 10%. Taking advantage of this deal, getting your hands on what's included in the package is the best way to enhance your performance this year. So go to rotoviz.com and subscribe now. You know, Liberty Mutual Insurance customizes car insurance so you only pay for what you need. You know what? Honestly, that's all we really want. You know, fairness. We want it in sports. We want it in life. That's why all sports we love have rules. That's why we have offsides so players don't float down the field or the ice and get cheap breakaways. That's why there are foul poles, sidelines, and out of bounds. In sports, the goal of fairness is built right in. Life doesn't work that way, as we all know, but Liberty Mutual is trying to make insurance work that way. That's what only paying for what you need is all about. And you know, when you do that, you can also save a lot of money. So switch and save when you customize your car and home insurance with Liberty Mutual and only pay for what you need. What's more fair than that? Way to go, Liberty Mutual. This message was brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company. Visit libertymutual.com to learn more. So Sean, another one of your uh, recent pieces um, mentioned it uh, on the the previous show, but Clyde edwards alaire is somebody that you're looking into, just starting to discuss a little bit more. Um, I know Davis Maddock was on the, the show with you for the draft with uh, Ben over on Sealing Bananas. Um, edwards alaire is somebody that he likes as well. So you're mentioning five reasons Clyde edwards alaire is poised to be this year's 20% win rate running back. So um just for anyone that's not sure 20 percent uh, win rate is, is quite good um so uh, sean what is uh, some of the reason that uh, you think ceh is ready to hit those big numbers yeah you mentioned that 20 percent is quite good so we looked at the last <laughs> four years in the ffpc only nine backs have done that right and only two of them have come from the first round so again, when we're trying to calibrate our expectations, think about how we want to put teams together. We want to know what's worked historically, right? And so during this time period that most fantasy participants think has been very running back heavy, one of the things that we've seen, two 20% winners from round one, two 20% winners from round two, the other five coming from pick 90 or later. And so when we're looking at what running backs have to do 
to get to that 20% win rate range, it, it makes a big deal, both the points and the price. So the two guys who have really jumped out from round two, you have Todd Gurley in 2017, uh, his 30% win rate that season was even better than Christian McCaffrey, who in 2019 had that 29% win rate on the massive, massive season. But the two backs who came out of round two, McCaffrey was actually the other one, right? Just the season before that, 2018. So McCaffrey has had a big season from round two, a big season from round one. It again reinforces the idea that if you aren't getting McCaffrey, then you want to be very careful about what you do at the running back position. Everybody else is so far below where he is, you may be making a mistake in terms of chasing running back points as opposed to actually setting yourself up to win. But you mentioned stealing bananas. One of the things that Ben and I have been talking about is should we be looking at the round two guys for 2021 instead of these round one players? And that kind of gets me back to Clyde Edwards Alaire, who I, you know I have a very mixed relationship with due to the fact that he went before Jonathan Taylor. He's not as good as Jonathan Taylor, but at the same time, he scored 176 points last season, right? If you look at first rounders from this century, and obviously he just barely sneaks in. He's the, the last first rounder you could possibly get there at pick 32. But his points actually rank 20, number 20 out of the 50 rookie first rounders. And if we want to think of some of the backs who scored fewer points than he did and then went over 200 in year two, and then went on to be fantasy MVPs. We've got guys like Sean Alexander, Steven Jackson, Deuce McAllister, Larry Johnson. You've got guys like D'Angelo Williams, CJ Spiller, Darren McFadden, Ryan Matthews, Jonathan Stewart. All of them either had one huge system. All of them either had one huge season or they went on to have consistent NFL careers. And so we're looking at him that actually set up quite nicely. Then you pull him up in the road of his screener. You look in the similarity search and his closest comp is LaShawn McCoy. There are some reasons for this, right? McCoy was better. He was playing with Brian Westbrook, whereas Clyde edwards is playing basically with nobody. But I think it's still interesting that you have this comp, which really is the player everyone was chasing with CEH in terms of making him the rookie 101. Yeah, and I think when we look at these guys, and especially when, when we look <laughs> at the uh, the run uh, in, in 2010, 2011 for, for LeSean McCoy in a minute, when we're doing some comparisons, um, I think we're, like if we get anything near that, we're going to be in a really special place with CEH. But um, in that time, you know, as, as rookies, I think sometimes a player, when they come in and you're expecting them to just go in and to be the guy straight away and to, to hit the ground running, it's not always going to happen. Even if we look at, Jonathan Taylor last year for as much as we like Taylor the start of the season it wasn't really looking like it was going to work out quite how the season then progressed right we kind of thought the first half of the season was going to be like the second half of the season but the whole season through and um, so when we look at Edwards Allaire the season started he had those games I can't remember if it was week one or week two I think he had like six goal line carries and it didn't work out for him they tried similar then and it just the, once once the kind of narrative started it can be hard to flip that but when we look at him versus McCoy in that rookie season um we had a situation where very similar in terms of PPR points 170 to Edwards Allaire 160.5 to LaShawn McCoy as you mentioned splitting that backfield um and then when we looked then at the rush efficiency or rush um, expected points uh, that was more in Edwards Allaire's favor 108 to 85.4 the receiving expected points then very, very similar, just both around the 80 range um, and overall very, very similar numbers across the board. Um, so I, I think, Sean, look, I think the offense is something that's going to, we're talking um, about the likes of James Conner getting a high-powered offense with the Cardinals. There really is no more high-powered offense in the NFL than the Kansas City Chiefs. So if we can get a, a step forward in year two from Edwards Allaire in this offense, it's not very hard to write that script that he is the, the running back one at the end of the season. Um, uh, McCoy in that second season then took a massive jump forward. He ended up, and I, I don't know if we can expect this, but he was uh, running back one 70% of the time, running back two 17% of the time. So that there gives him uh, 87% as at least a running back two, which is quite a phenomenal run throughout basically those those two seasons. I know the expectations might be getting high for you, Sean, with Edwards Alaire. Are they as high as what LeSean McCoy did in, in that two-year stretch? No, they wouldn't be. At the same time, 
I was much more enthusiastic about him after digging into the receiving splits a little bit more deeply, right? One of the things that I have been concerned about is that this passing offense with Patrick Mahomes is a vertical offense. He can hit Tyreek Hill deep. He can hit some of those peripheral receivers deep, even though uh, we have some questions about their talent. Obviously, Travis Kelsey dominates the intermediate routes like no one else in football. And so you don't need all of these dump offs that Andy Reid's Eagles used in the early 2000s. When I went in and looked at this, I found that those Reid Philadelphia teams from 2000 to 2007, they averaged 226 receiving expected points to the running back. You go in and you look at Reid's Chiefs from 2014 to 2020, and they only averaged 154, right? So a huge difference in terms of the size of the receiving pie. However, that's not the time period that LaShawn McCoy played in. It actually contracted quite a bit from the Westbrook era to the McCoy era. So then looked a little more closely at just the Reed Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes, just those Reed Eagles with McCoy, and found that actually the Mahomes Chiefs have had a little bit more. 163 receiving expected points to the running back position, whereas McCoy's Eagles only 157. And so the volume is there to have a LaShawn McCoy-like season. The reason we haven't been seeing that recently is because the Chiefs haven't been able to have, number one, an elite running back, and number two, keep him healthy or keep him out of trouble, right? So we look at the receiving share of expected points. 2015, you have Charkandrick West, 43%. Next season, Spencer Ware, 47%. Hunt 55%, Hunt 38% in part because he doesn't play the whole season. Then you have uh, Damian Williams, 34%. And last year, Clyde edwards helaire at 48%, again, in part because he couldn't stay healthy. Contrast that with what McCoy did during that three-year stretch. You have 71%, 88%, 68%. Now you said, well, those are very high numbers. We wouldn't necessarily expect uh, any individual running back to do that. Certainly, if edwards helaire isn't the same talent as LaShawn McCoy, you wouldn't necessarily expect him to do that. But we look at what happened with Westbrook. We look at what happened with McCoy. Andy Reid has always wanted to employ this running back star, the sort of three down running back, but a three down running back where the emphasis was actually on the passing game, as opposed to a three down running back where, you know, you use him for those big downs and then you sort of grudgingly give him the receiving numbers. He's emphasized the pass. And the whole reason that they selected Edwards Allaire in the first round with really five studs, still on the board was because you're like, this guy can be our Westbrook and McCoy. This guy can be our person who takes all of those receiving touches and dominates with them. And so I think for Edwards Allaire, if he stays healthy, he's going to have 75% of the receiving expected points. And that right there gets him into a profile where if the Chiefs do what they do, if he doesn't get stuffed at the goal line, which is going to be a little bit random, they've upgraded their offensive line suddenly he has the profile necessary to make the leap. Whereas so many of the running backs being drafted ahead of them, even though they're being drafted in the first two rounds, they're guys that we like the talent levels for. They don't have that same profile. They don't have the same upside. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. And when we look through, I know we like guys like Chubb, you know, probably unless there's an injury, not going to get that workload. Like if we're looking at scenarios and that, second round of guys who can really take that step forward and push themselves to be in that range with Alvin Kamara with Dalvin Cook I think he really um, fits into that and it's going to be interesting now that we've talked him up um, hopefully we're past the second round of our listener league by the time that happens uh, maybe we get a chance to snag him at the the back end of the second but um, he probably will be gone already but he is somebody that I, I think it's very easy to see that that jump taken forward and you mentioned the perimeter pieces for the Chiefs there is some there that I think we can, you know, we, we've talked about McCall Hardman uh, numerous times over the past couple of years on the show, but there is pieces there, but there's lots of question marks still surrounding those guys, and that might open up some more opportunities as well in that receiving game for uh, CEH. So um, it'll be interesting to see where he goes, but I think Sean's summarizing it up as, you know, there is question marks around him and what how, what he did last year, but, uh, you know, th there's, there's one chance to get him this year, I guess, if you want to have somebody with that elite level upside to uh, bring home the championship so um he's a very intriguing prospect for let me put you on the spot here ceh versus aaron jones we believe fairly strongly that jones is the bigger talent 
He's got more explosiveness. He's demonstrated that he can do it at the NFL level. He has the elite touchdown upside. We've seen that happen in the past. He is a good receiver, and they've used him a little bit more with that. He has a team in the Green Bay Packers who could be as explosive as the Kansas City Chiefs, but he has A.J. Dillon, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire has basically nobody, right? Has Darrell Williams there. Who do you like between those two guys if you're on the board in the middle of round two and really feel like you need to have a running back? Yeah, I was waiting for you to add that, but at the, at the end, so I couldn't back out. If I if I have to go running back, I'm going uh, CEH, and you hit on it. We've touched on it a few times over the last couple of shows. AJ Dillon is in a great spot for uh, getting those kind of goal line carries, getting those opportunities, and to have him as a zero RB candidate. Love Aaron Jones. Packers paid him a lot of money, but when we look at you know Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon versus Clyde Edwards Alaire and what is available in the running back position at the moment with the Chiefs. I think he can be in that Christian McCaffrey role where he's just going to get, you know, 80% of the workload. Whereas I, I don't think that's possible for Aaron Jones, barring something drastic happening to AJ Dillon. So um I, I think just on the the volume that he's going to get, I, I think Edwards Alaire should be the pick there. I, I really think that he should be going in that range and I, I think Antonio Gibson should probably be going a little bit earlier too at the, the very start of that second round potentially but I think Edwards Allaire should be the, the next running back going after him um, if we're if we're trying to see where the rankings go so I think if you are looking to go running back running back at the back end of that first round which I'm not probably looking to do um, I think you could do a lot worse than Edwards Allaire being that second guy. So that's going to do it for this edition of the show. Um, as always, at the end, I'd like to let you know you can get that 10% discount to Rotoviz NFL Pass. All you have to do is add the code RB Radio 2021 at checkout or go to rotoviz.com forward slash podcast for further information. Uh, two fun articles there, one from Sean, one from Sam Wallace. You can check them up on the site, of course. And if you use that RB Radio 2021 code you'll get yourself a 10 percent discount to gain access to all of the content and tools of course those tools will be highly beneficial as you get ready for draft season if you aren't already drafting but we're going to have another two shows coming your way as we progress through this week so come back check those out make sure you're subscribed to the individual road of his overtime podcast feed drop us a written review on your favorite podcast app we do appreciate those greatly we will be reading some of those out on saturday's show um, so thank you to everyone who has dropped a review for us until we're back with another edition of the podcast my name is colin kelly you can follow me on twitter at overtime ireland my co-host is sean siegel who as i mentioned you can check out his great work up on rotoviz.com and until we're back with another show have a good one thank you for listening to overtime and rotoviz radio please rate and review the rotoviz radio podcast on itunes or your favorite podcast app you can contact us via email at rotovizradio at gmail.com follow us on twitter at rotoviz radio and remember you can always support the pod by subscribing to rotoviz with a discount through the rotoviz radio homepage rotoviz.com forward slash podcast What's the worst thing about selling your home? Probably all the times you'll have to scramble for a last-minute showing and somehow clean the dishes, pick up your kids' toys, make all the beds, and get out of the house in an hour. Sounds exhausting. That's not the case when you buy and sell a home with Orchard. They'll help you buy and move into your new place first, and then Orchard will take care of all the showings on your old house. That's right. You're already in your new house. No crazy last-minute scrambling. Take a look and see how Orchard can help you at Orchard.com and get started with a no-cost, no-obligation offer. That's Orchard.com.